Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. In this video, I'm gonna share with you all of my tips and tricks for maintaining red color treated hair. I've been dyeing my hair red for the last 10 years and I have certainly learned a lot in the process. Unfortunately, red hair color is a very hard one to maintain. So I wanna share with you everything that I've learned if you are dyeing your hair red or looking to dye your hair red. This is everything that I would recommend to you in order to keep your hair as red and vibrant as possible for as long as possible. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, I'm gonna say if you're thinking about dyeing your hair red and you really want it to look like a natural redhead color, I would recommend going to a professional salon and having them color your hair for you. Why? There are so many different colors of red that you can choose from and a salon professional that has a lot of experience is going to be able to look at your hair, your hair's history, and help you pick the red that's gonna A, look the best on you, but also wear the best and be the easiest to maintain for you. I personally have gone with just about this color for the last 10 years. I switched it up once to a little bit of a deeper color. It was fall. I wanted to switch it up. I've been doing this a really long time. I wanted something a little bit different and my hairdresser did warn me, hey, if you use this color, we can totally do it. It's probably not going to be as vibrant for you as long as what you're used to. I did it anyways and kind of found myself disappointed pretty quickly because the red didn't last very long. So a salon professional is going to be able to help guide you in picking the best color for you and also managing your expectations on how long you can expect that vibrancy to last. All right, now that we've got our hair dyed red, looking pretty, it's nice and vibrant, now it's time for us to maintain that color, which honestly is the most difficult part of dyeing your hair red. And the reason why maintaining red hair is so difficult is because the color red has the longest wavelength. And so these red hair dye molecules are bigger than other hair dye molecules. They don't penetrate the hair as well and they don't last as long. So now I wanna give you all of my personal tips and tricks, all of the things that I've learned over the past 10 years to get my hair to stay as vibrant as possible for as long as possible. And for reference, I get my hair recolored about every 10 weeks. So this is a pretty long time for me to go in between appointments. I think I have the routine down pat. Some of these may sound like too much for you. I promise you get used to it and it's not that bad, but these are everything that I would recommend to you if you dye your hair red. I think I really have two non-negotiables when it comes to maintaining your red hair. And the first one of those is gonna be get yourself a shampoo and conditioner that is specifically formulated for red color treated hair. These shampoos and conditioners tend to have a little bit of red dye in them, so it helps keep that vibrancy over time. It's not gonna totally dye your hair red, but it does help maintain it quite a bit. This one is a new one to me. This is from John Frieda. I have used a few others in the past. I've used the Purology one. I've used the Joyco one. Unfortunately, these red shampoo and conditioners tend to get discontinued. So this is the only one that I'm able to find at the moment, but I'm very happy with this. This is actually the most affordable option of any red shampoo and conditioner that I've ever been able to use in the past. So I'm very excited about this. I actually purchased these as a set on Amazon and both of them were a total of about $20, which I wanna say for a shampoo and conditioner from Purology and Joyco, I wanna say I was spending about 40 to $60 for the set. So I am so pleased with this. I have gone through an entire 10 week cycle. So I got my hair done used exclusively the shampoo and conditioner for 10 weeks, just got it redone. And I think that this worked just as well as any others that I've used in the past. I find the shampoo lathers a little bit better than some of the other ones I've used in the past. So I really like this one. I'm gonna link it for you in the description box below, but I would 100% invest in a red shampoo and conditioner. And at this price point, I kind of think there's no excuses. Definitely get this if you are someone who's coloring your hair red, I think it's really gonna help you a lot. If for any reason you cannot get your hands on a red shampoo and conditioner, then definitely find one that's formulated for color treated hair and does not contain any sulfates. With that said, I would also say, do not use any product on your hair at all that contains sulfates. These are really bad for color treated hair. So in general, even if you were dyeing your hair a different color, I would stay away from any product that contains sulfates. Now my second tip is one that a lot of you are probably not gonna like, and that is 
I do not wash my hair in hot water. I only wash my hair in cold water. And I know so many of you are gonna be like, I cannot do that. And whenever I tell my friends, hey, my hair never touches hot water, they're like, what? I take hot showers. But when it's time to wash my hair, I will turn the water cold. If I really can't stand cold, then at least room temperature, but never hot. And I will simply wash my hair in the cold water and then turn it back hot. So really, you can still take your hot shower, just keep your hair out of the water, and then when it's time to wash your hair, turn it cooler just for the time being, and then you can go back to your hot shower. But this is really going to keep that color lasting a little bit longer. The reason for this is that heat causes things to expand and it can cause the color to kind of seep out of your hair a little bit quicker than it would if you just washed your hair in cold water. I know it's not a really fun adjustment, but you know what they say, beauty is pain. To me, it's worth it. And it's just a habit that I formed for myself and I think that it really does help. So use your red shampoo and conditioner, wash it in cold water, at the very least room temperature water, and try to keep it away from heat. Speaking of heat, I think you all know where I'm going with this. Any sort of heat is never good for your hair. So if you can avoid heat tools, by all means do that. It's not possible for me. So if I'm using a hot tool, really try to use a heat protectant on your hair just to protect it as much as possible. I don't have one that I'm absolutely in love with, so I'm not gonna share a specific product with you, but whichever one you like, I highly recommend making sure that you're using a heat protectant before using any sort of hot tools on it, not only to protect the color in your hair, but just to protect your hair in general. I'm gonna go back to washing your hair a little bit here, and that is, I would recommend washing your hair as little as possible. This can get really difficult if you're someone like me who's very active. I try to wash my hair only, I'd say every two to three days. Really, I just see how long I can go and once it gets oily and I have to wash it, then I wash it. But I do not wash my hair every day. The more you wash it, the faster the color is gonna come out and that's what we're trying to avoid, right? So I do recommend finding a dry shampoo that you love. I personally like Batiste, it's very affordable, it's effective for me. I know some people have commented that they don't like this because of the white cast in the hair. So how I use this is I'll spray it in the hair, really rub it into the scalp, let it sit and absorb those oils for a little bit, and then brush through the hair. If I see any of that white cast, any of that powder still in the hair, what I do is I take a towel, your bath towel, a hand towel, anything like that, and just rub it on the hair wherever you sprayed this, and that will help kind of lift that out of the hair for you. It helps a lot if you're getting that white cast. So I like this one a lot. If you have a different one that you prefer, totally cool, but anything that helps you wash your hair less than normal is really gonna help prolong the color. I know it's not ideal, it's really not fun for me as I'm a dancer, I'm very active. Find a wash schedule that works for you. Like I said, I pretty much just hold out and see how long I can get, and once it's not looking too great, then it's time to wash it, and it is what it is. We wanna minimize washing our hair so often so that we're keeping the color in. So I said before that I have two non-negotiables for sure when it comes to maintaining your red hair, and here comes the second one. If you are going to be outside for any extended period of time in direct sunlight, I highly recommend that you cover your hair and wear a hat. The sun will absolutely fade your hair so quickly, so we definitely want to try to avoid that. What does this look like for me personally? If I'm outside walking my dog for 10 minutes, honestly, I'm not gonna worry about it. But if I'm going to the beach, I'm going to the pool, I'm going outside to exercise for an extended period of time, I'm gonna throw on a hat and what I do is I'll put my hair in a low bun, put the hat on and cover my hair as much as I can. To be honest with you, I'm not a big hat girl. I don't really like the look on me, but I do it when I have to in order to protect my hair. And I highly recommend that you do the same. I really think that it's gonna help you maintain that vibrancy that you want. And I'm gonna leave you with one final tip. If you find yourself trying your best to maintain your red hair, but you find that it's lost a little bit of its vibrancy, maybe you're not ready to schedule another color appointment, maybe your appointment is set for a date in the future, you really wanna get just a little bit of vibrancy back. I'm gonna share with you a product that I like to use in order to achieve that. And that is going to be a color depositing hair mask. I personally really like this Moroccan oil one. I have tried both of the reddish tones of this mask and I do like both of them. They are copper and Bordeaux, 
Copper is more of your typical like gingery, of course, coppery red hair color. And the Bordeaux one is a little bit more, it's like a purpley red. This to me is purpley, almost a little pink leaning. So if I was gonna put one in my hair these days, I would be using the copper just because I am an actress, my agents submit me for jobs, and I need to look as close to this as possible at all times. So the copper is gonna do a little bit better job of that for me. This one may be a little bit more different than my typical red hair color because of those purpley tones in it. So while I absolutely love this color right now, I would only use the copper. But if this color speaks to you, I do find that it's very pretty and I kind of wish that I could use it, but I just can't right now. What a color depositing mask is gonna do for you is it's going to add just a little bit of color back into the hair. It's not a hair dye, so I find that if my roots are grown out, it really doesn't add anything there, but it does add a little bit of vibrancy back to the parts of my hair that were previously color treated. Is it going to replace a color appointment? Absolutely not. But what it does do is help me get a little bit of that brightness back into the hair if it's really lacking and I don't have an appointment in the near future. So to recap, if you are looking to dye your hair red or maybe you already have red color treated hair, this is what I recommend to you. Get it done by a salon professional who can help pick the right red for you and who can also really manage your expectations and let you know what your maintenance is really gonna look like. If you can, use a shampoo and conditioner that's specifically formulated for red color treated hair. If you can't find one, always use products that are sulfate free and make sure any of your other hair products, any other leave-ins, things that you're throwing in your hair also are sulfate free. Avoid heat as much as you can whether that is utilizing your heat tools a little bit less, or if you do need to use them, add a heat protectant, avoid the sun as much as you can, throw a hat on if you're spending a lot of time outside, and if you can wash your hair in cold water, I'd absolutely do that. And try to minimize the amount of times that you're washing your hair. If you don't have to wash it, I'd recommend you don't. And lastly, if you find that your hair is losing a little bit of color, Definitely try out a color depositing mask to add a little bit of vibrancy back into your red hair. I hope that these tips and tricks and the advice that I have to give is helpful for you on your red hair journey. As someone who has done this for 10 years, I certainly know what it's like. So there's nothing worse than getting your freshly red, vibrant hair and then it fading a few weeks later because you didn't know how to maintain it. So I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.